Today, we're in beautiful Monterey, California for the annual Bacchus Photomass Symposium. I'm Angie Kellen for the eBeam Initiative, and with me is advanced photomask expert, Franklin Koch. He's the Executive Vice President at Topan Photomask. At today's eBeam Initiative event, Christian Bergel of AMTC presented some data about short and mid-range effects associated with EUV masks. Franklin, what else is different about EUV masks? Well, I think Christian did a really good job talking about e-beam effects in particular, um, but there are also process effects that we're going to have to account for. For example, we've heard this week that line edge roughness for EUV mask will need to be around one nanometer. But unfortunately, today, the best masks in production are more like five to six nanometers line edge roughness. So that bridging that gap will be a tremendous challenge. So I think that will be the number one challenge for, uh, for us aside from the e-beam effects. One of the other things I want to ask you is um, some of the presentations today. They had uh, specific examples of complex shapes on mass, mm -hmm. including sub-80 nanometer feature sizes. Now with complex mass becoming more common at 20 nanometers, how are you addressing the uh, trade-off with mask write times and wafer quality? Uh, that's a very interesting question. It turns out that the mask maker to some extent can impact that, but more often than not, it's the, um, it's the mask designer, which often resides in the customers, on the customer's side of things. So the mask designer, I suspect today, in making that, uh, trying to balance complexity with uh, write time, will, will actually go for um, quality, for print quality. And the reason is that mask write times haven't increased dramatically over the last 10 years. The mask writing tool suppliers have done a tremendous job of pulling out all the overheads that were kind of inherent in the tools back around the turn of the century. They've done a very good job at that. However, those are all gone now. So now we're getting to the point where there's no more overhead left to reduce, um, and we're seeing tremendous complexity and therefore shot count increases. So I suspect that in the near future, we're going to see write time increase dramatically. In addition, Today, maybe a designer can say, you know, I'll take a little bit of, uh, I'll compromise print quality maybe a little bit in order to save some write time. But at some point, the OPC needs to be spot on. And in order for that to occur, you can't, you really can't cut any corners. So I think we're going to see an appreciable increase in the near future. Well, that kind of leads me into my next question. Um, it's about the presentation today done by Global Foundries. Mm -hmm. They presented the idea of using e-beam simulation along with wafer simulation as kind of a, a technique to manage the wafer write times, or I'm sorry, the mask write times and wafer quality. Right. How do you see e-beam simulation evolving? Well, that's a really, that's also a very good question. And I think that the work that's being done today on e-beam simulation is a harbinger of things to come. To date, we've had on electron beam tools, um, we've had proximity effect correction algorithms that are actually on the tools. Those actually vary dose only, and they're good for, as Christian pointed out, they're really good for longer range or mid-range effects, say one micron and up. On the other hand, OPC algorithms, which are always shape-based, so they move vertices around in the mass design, those algorithms um, are used for very short range effects. And I think what the work on e-beam simulation is pointing out is that we need to merge those two approaches and come with something that has, a, has both a shape and a dose uh, uh, degree of freedom and therefore affect what I would call an integrated solution to the problem. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> yes, it does actually very well. And I want to thank you today, Franklin, for your time and sharing your insights and technology insights with all of us. And uh, in Monterey for the EBM Initiative, I'm Angie Kellen.